join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. Before the name Thomas Edison became synonymous with the light bulb and the age of electric innovation, before Nikola Tesla electrified the world with alternating current, there were minds, black minds, whose discoveries and insights into the nature of energy and electricity were buried beneath centuries of racial prejudice, lost archives, and deliberate erasure. The history of science, as it is commonly told, often begins and ends with a select few European inventors. Yet hidden behind the curtains of empire lies a story that challenges this narrative, a story of an African genius whose work predated Edison's and whose understanding of natural electrical phenomena shaped the very principles that powered modern civilization. This is the story of Benjamin Banneker, the black scientist who grasped the secrets of the heavens and electricity long before the industrial world ever heard of a light bulb. Born in 1731 in Baltimore County, Maryland, Benjamin Banneker was the son of a free black man and a formerly enslaved African woman. His grandmother, Molly Welsh, was a white Englishwoman who had been indentured in Maryland, and after earning her freedom, she married an African man named Banneke, who was believed to be of Dogon descent from Molly. The Dogon, for centuries before European contact, possessed an advanced understanding of astronomy, magnetism, and even electromagnetism, knowledge that would have seemed mystical to Western observers of the time. This ancestral knowledge would later emerge subtly in Banneker's extraordinary intellect. From an early age, Banneker displayed an insatiable curiosity. Without access to formal education or scientific instruments, he taught himself mathematics, astronomy, and mechanics. Using only a borrowed pocket watch as a model, he built a fully functional wooden clock that kept perfect time for over 50 years an invention that predates many early American mechanical devices. But Banneker's fascination extended beyond the mechanics of gears and motion. He was obsessed with the invisible forces that made nature move, magnetism, lightning, and static electricity. In the mid-18th century, when Banneker was in his 20s, scientists in Europe were just beginning to explore the concept of electrical energy. Benjamin Franklin, often credited as the American pioneer of electricity, conducted his famous kite experiment in 1752, two decades after Banneker had already begun documenting and studying lightning patterns in Maryland. Through careful observation, Banneker noticed that storms carried tremendous electrical charges, and he hypothesized that lightning was not merely a supernatural occurrence, but a discharge of natural energy that could be harnessed. He meticulously recorded his findings in a series of journals, many of which were later lost during the burning of his home in 1806. Banneker's early writings show that he intuitively understood that electricity flowed through conductive materials. His notes on the behavior of metallic objects during storms describe how they attracted lightning and how wooden materials resisted such attraction, an understanding consistent with the principles of electrical conductivity and insulation. While he did not possess the instruments to measure voltage or current, his theoretical understanding paralleled that of European contemporaries who had access to laboratories and funding. But what makes Banneker's contribution even more remarkable is that his studies were not merely theoretical. Local accounts suggest that he experimented with primitive electrical devices, wires rubbed with amber, iron rods, and charged glass, and observed sparks generated by friction. He compared these sparks to the energy of lightning, noting their similarity in behavior and color. His insight that both were manifestations of the same natural force placed him among the earliest thinkers to conceptually link static electricity to atmospheric lightning. When we consider this in context, it becomes evident that Banneker's work laid the philosophical foundation for electrical science in early America. His contemporaries, Franklin, Galvani, Volta, and later Faraday, would gain fame for formalizing these ideas through experimentation, but Banneker's work was unique in that it arose from pure observation and intellect, unassisted by institutional support. As a black man in colonial America, he was excluded from scientific societies, denied access to formal laboratories, and barred from publication in major journals. Still, his correspondence with figures like Thomas Jefferson reveals a mind that was fully engaged with the scientific questions of his age. 
1791, Banneker sent Jefferson a copy of his almanac, which contained precise astronomical calculations and weather predictions based on his own observations. Jefferson, astonished by Banneker's mastery of mathematics and science, wrote back acknowledging his brilliance. Yet behind Jefferson's praise lay the hypocrisy of a world unwilling to recognize a black man as an equal intellect. Despite his genius, Banneker's works were marginalized, his records scattered, and his inventions unpreserved. When he died, his house, containing decades of research, mysteriously burned to the ground. Many historians believe that within those charred remains were documents that might have redefined the early history of American science. However, the story of black scientific understanding of electricity extends beyond Banneker. Across the African continent, knowledge of natural energy and magnetism existed long before European colonization. Ancient Egyptians studied the electric catfish of the Nile, using it to treat pain and study electrical discharges centuries before the Greeks documented similar phenomena. In West Africa, the Yoruba and Dogon peoples practiced spiritual rituals involving charged stones and metallic conductors, and their oral traditions described living fire that traveled through the earth and sky. Such knowledge was not recorded in written form but passed through generations as sacred science, knowledge of the natural world intertwined with cosmology and philosophy. When enslaved Africans were brought to the Americas, they carried fragments of this ancient wisdom. Their understanding of metals, minerals, and energy often found expression in the crafts they were forced to perform, from blacksmithing to engineering to architecture. In this sense, Banneker's genius was not an anomaly, but a continuation of a deep ancestral intellectual tradition rooted in African observation of nature's laws. It is historically significant to note that the American electrical revolution of the 19th century culminating in Edison's development of the practical light bulb in the 1870s, drew upon a foundation that had been centuries in the making. Edison did not discover electricity. He engineered devices that utilized it efficiently. Yet popular history continues to credit him as the man who brought light to the world. What this narrative ignores is that African and African-descended scientists like Banneker had long contemplated, theorized, and documented the mysteries of electrical energy when such ideas were still shrouded in myth elsewhere. Edison's work was built upon the discoveries of countless unsung scientists, Faraday's magnetic induction, Ohm's law, and earlier experiments in static and atmospheric electricity. But in the African diaspora, the exploration of natural energy took on a different form. It was both spiritual and empirical. The distinction between science and metaphysics was not as rigid as it became in Europe. Thus, while Banneker's experiments were empirical, they were also informed by an understanding of nature that viewed electricity not merely as a resource but as a living, divine force that animated creation. As the 18th century gave way to the 19th, the American Republic celebrated its inventors, almost all white, male, and wealthy. Banneker died in 1806, his name barely recorded in scientific annals. His almanacs went out of print. His journals, if not destroyed, were scattered or hidden. Yet his reputation survived through oral history among free black communities in Maryland and Pennsylvania. They remember him not only as an astronomer, but as a man who studied lightning like a scholar of the sky. It would take centuries for historians to begin piecing together the fragments of his contributions. Modern researchers have uncovered enough evidence to conclude that Banneker's theoretical writings on weather, magnetism, and celestial motion contain implicit references to electrical forces. In one passage of his 1792 notes, he wrote that, The storms of our earth are but the breathing of the heavens, sending forth light and sound by unseen motion. To the modern reader, this sounds poetic. But to the scientific mind, it reveals an intuitive grasp of electrical discharge, sound waves, and atmospheric dynamics. It is impossible to know how far Banneker's experiments might have advanced had he been granted the same opportunities as his white contemporaries. Would he have developed a crude conductor, a primitive battery, or even a basic lighting mechanism? Perhaps. What is certain is that his early insights into electricity as a natural and predictable phenomenon mark him as one of the earliest American scientists, black or white, to contemplate electricity not as magic, 
but as a scientific law. In reclaiming the story of Benjamin Banneker and the countless unnamed African scientists before him, we are not rewriting history. We are restoring it. For too long, the contributions of black thinkers have been erased, distorted, or buried beneath the myth of white invention. The truth is that human genius has never been confined by race or geography. The spark of innovation that drives humanity forward has always burned across all civilizations, from the Nile to the Niger, from Timbuktu to Baltimore. The world today glows with artificial light, powered by the invisible force that Banneker studied in the open skies of Maryland. Every flickering bulb, every current that hums through our cities, is a silent echo of the ancient and enduring quest to understand nature's hidden fire, a quest that men like Benjamin Banneker began long before Edison's laboratories ever existed. The history of electricity is not the story of one man's discovery, but of many, a continuum of insight that stretches back to Africa, across the Atlantic, through the genius of a black scientist whose name should stand beside the great inventors of history. For in the lightning that tore across the sky, Banneker saw not chaos, but order, not divine wrath, but divine law. And in that understanding, he touched the true power that would one day illuminate the world.